Sir. Good afternoon, um, Dr. Srinivas Thati, uh, Head of Department, Orthopedics and Trauma, AG Hospitals, Gachibowli. We welcome you on to this uh, webinar, which we are going to talk about uh, arthritis in general and the diagnosis and treatment part. I'm joined by my senior colleague, uh, Dr. Rajesh Racha, consultant orthopedic surgeon, and Dr. Madhuri, a consultant rheumatologist. October 12th is uh, celebrated as a World Arthritis Day to increase the awareness of arthritis, which is a, a significant uh, problem in our society, which can affect patients uh, or per people's mobility and can cause significant morbidity. So we are going to discuss on some very common issues in arthritis, what are the different types of arthritis, how we diagnose each type of arthritis and what are the treatment modalities by which we can improve the patient's symptoms. First, I'll ask Dr. Madhuri to give a brief about what are the different types of arthritis and how she's going to diagnose them. Dr. Madhuri, please. Thank you, sir. So, uh, October 12th is World Arthritis Day. Uh, like Dr. Sinvas has said, it is an important day to try to raise awareness of arthritis. Arthritis uh, leads not only to physical disability or morbidity, it also has a longer or a more wider spectrum of impact in the form of social dysfunction. There is a lot of economic loss or economic load due to arthritis. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of arthritis conditions may not be covered under insurance policies. So we do have this idea or the <laughs> rheumatology associations are working hard in association with other branches, of course, to try to extend the coverage of insurance policies to cover arthritis. Uh, what is arthritis? We'll start off with that. Arthra is a word for joint. Itis is a broad term for any inflammation. So any inflammation of any joint could be considered as arthritis. It's a very broad term like fever. Fever could have many causes. So arthritis itself doesn't refer to one particular disease. It covers a broad spectrum of diseases. And the major causes of arthritis would be inflammatory. Inflammatory means basically uh, there could be some swelling, loss of function, there could be pain, tenderness, and uh, sometimes even warmth of the joint. There could be mechanical causes where due to pressure or overload of the joint, you may have an inflammation of the joint or arthritis. So that the most common area we see is the knee, apart from other joints, but the most common area which we all are familiar with would be knee pain or knee osteoarthritis. Other causes like tumors and other causes will also be considered as a part of arthritis. However, that will not be the focus of our discussion today. So as a broad differentiation, what is arthritis? Any inflammation of the joint, what does it cause? It can cause physical symptoms. Sometimes they can even lead to fever, loss of weight, loss of appetite. Some of these conditions which are in, uh, autoimmune in nature, they can even affect other organ systems. Sometimes we see them affecting the lung, the kidneys, the brain, the heart, uh, other organs too. So arthritis is a very broad term and I think we'll get back to Sir for further uh, yeah. guiding the discussion. Thanks for that intro. So basically we divide arthritis into inflammatory, degenerative or mechanical because of the wear and tear and infective and there are several other causes like crystal arthropathies, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll focus mainly on the common problems. One is uh, rheumatoid arthritis, the other one is uh, osteoarthritis. Even for these common problems, there is a lot of confusion in people, uh, in general public, who to approach to if I have a problem with uh, something like a rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis. So Dr. Rajesh, how do you differentiate and who do you suggest based on the symptoms to meet? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Srinivas. Uh, so, uh, two most common type of arthritis which we come across in our day-to-day -day practice uh, is osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. So, osteoarthritis is mainly affects uh, a single joint or uh, maybe two joints, etc. But uh, a rheumatoid arthritis is a more systemic disease where it affects uh, most of the joints. Well, it's a polyarthritis basically. What, or, what that means is it affects more than a uh, few joints. So especially the small joints of the hands, 
the elbows, shoulders, knees. So it's a uh, it's it's a systemic. Mainly, it involves m most of the uh, joints. It's more of an inflammatory arthritis, uh, wherein um, e your own body's immune system is acting against the uh, body's cartilage uh, production and causes rheumatoid arthritis. Dr. Madhuri will explain a bit more about it. So the other part of uh, the other common arthritis is the osteoarthritis. Which is the uh, which we in in general what we see uh, mainly affecting the knee joint uh, or the shoulder joint or the hip joint uh, which we see commonly. So this arthritis, osteoarthritis, mainly uh, it's uh, like a age related arthritis where there is a degeneration of the cartilage over a period of time. So it is mainly the wear and tear of the cartilage within the within the within the bigger joints like say in the knee or uh, hip or the shoulder bigger joints. Um, you can also see osteoarthritis in the smaller joints as well, but more common in the weight-bearing joints like uh, like a knee osteoarthritis. So what happens in osteoarthritis exactly is where the cartilage inside the joint. So the cartilage is like a, a smooth lining which is uh, around the uh, joint. So which uh, allows the smooth movement of the joint, reduces the friction and also acts like a shock absorber. So what is happening like in any uh, like shock absorbers in a vehicle where over a period of time, they wear off. Uh, the wear and tear is there. Uh, gradually, the wear and tear process happens in the shock absorbers, in like in like in vehicles. Like similarly, in our body as well, this uh, cartilage slowly wears off over a period of time. It thins out and then exposes the bone. That's when the uh, the patient starts complaining of the pain. So it's mainly an age related. Apart from the age related uh, arthritis, uh, the osteoarthritis can also happen. For example, if there is an injury around the joint. Uh, like a, what we call a post-traumatic arthritis where uh, some injury has happened around the joint or you know the shock of the other type of shock absorber in the in the knee for example which is like a meniscus what we call it there's an injury to that uh, or uh, any injury to the soft tissues around the joint can also stimulate the uh, degenerative process of the cartilage which we term it as uh, osteoarthritis so these are the two common types of osteoarthritis uh, common type of arthritis osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis um, the further on in the discussion, we can uh, further discuss uh, how to deal with it. Yeah. So to start with, if a patient has a, a symptom, like the common symptoms with any arthritis, as Dr. Madhuri and Dr. Raya said, is pain, swelling, restricted movements or stiffness, or difficulty in weight bearing. In some patients, you can have systemic symptoms like fever, loss of weight, etc. So if a person has a single joint involvement, usually the large joints, majority of the times in an age group above 40 or 50 years of age, we think it could be osteoarthritis. A patient having a multiple joints or polyarthritis, so we can say polyarthralgia or single joint is monoarthralgia. In rheumatoid arthritis, patients can have both, but more common is polyarthralgia. So, to have a clear idea, if you have a single joint problem, who do you approach? You can go to an orthopedic surgeon. If you have a multiple joint problems, you have to reach a rheumatologist or you can go to a family physician who can direct you to either an orthopedic surgeon or a rheumatologist. That will be the easiest way of doing it. So when it comes to rheumatoid arthritis, Dr. Madhuri, how, are the, how is the diagnosis done and uh, how do you establish uh, by doing investigation? So I think that is, I would like to reiterate what sir has said. It is very important to know when do you approach the right doctor because we lose a lot of time when patients do not have a diagnosis for their problems. So yes, if it is multiple joints, more than one joint, please see a rheumatologist or a family physician like sir has said. Typically one joint at a time, yes, please go ahead and see one of the orthopedician specialties. Now coming to rheumatoid arthritis, it is more common in females. It is more commonly, it starts off with the small joints of the hands and feet. The typical symptoms would be pain, swelling and morning stiffness which lasts for at least half an hour. Some other symptoms which people report are unable to flex the fingers or having a good grip early in the morning as soon as they wake up. So they may find difficulty in things like opening locks, opening door handles, things like holding, uh, gripping, any act uh, gripping a toothbrush, turning taps and uh, especially in females turning uh, bottle caps, those kind of activities are worse in the morning and typically get better as the day passes. 
Some people use warmth to help relieve their symptoms. They may say report uh, improvement in symptoms after a warm water bath or immersing their hands in hot water using some hot fermentation. So these symptoms typically start in the small joints of the hands and feet and they may even progress to involve other joints. As explained before, these may also be responsible for some amount of fever. Some people rarely may even have other organ involvement, but generally these pains are the one consideration where you should think of start the initial stages of rheumatoid arthritis. Establishing a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, first thing most important is the history and physical examination. Lab reports support our diagnosis, but they do not confirm our diagnosis. We have some specific blood investigations like rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP, which if present in very high values can confirm our diagnosis. But there is an entity or a subset of people who may be having even these blood tests negative or the blood reports within the normal range. And because they continue to have or present with the typical symptoms of arthritis, we may use further imaging methods. We may use an X-ray or an ultrasound or an MRI of the affected area to demonstrate the arthritis and thereby confirm it as rheumatoid arthritis even if the blood values are negative. So back to you sir. Thank you. That's uh, very clearly established. Mm -hmm. Once we take the clinical history examination and the lab reports, we will be able to establish whether it's a zero positive when the rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP antibodies are positive, we call it zero positive rheumatoid arthritis. When they are negative, we say it is a zero negative rheumatoid arthritis. So once we establish the diagnosis as either of them, the next is the treatment part. So what are the common modalities to use in treating rheumatoid arthritis? So treatment modalities in rheumatoid arthritis have advanced uh, drastically over the last couple of decades. The main problem in rheumatoid arthritis is inflammation of the joints. So whatever medication we use is used to decrease the inflammation in the joints. If caught very early, then there is even a chance that the patient may end up going off medication. There is a common worry or a common concern that how long do I have to take this medication. Correct. It really depends on when you are presenting to your physician. If you are presenting, say, let me just compare it to a more common disease like diabetes or hypertension. If you do present in the pre-diabetes or pre-hypertensive stage, you do have lifestyle modifications and minimum use of medications which can help reverse or delay the onset of therapy at least. The same thing with rheumatoid. The earlier the pre you present, the earlier you are diagnosed, the less medication you are going to need and the less chances that you will be on long term or continuous therapy. So what are the medications we use? As of now, if we talk about an established rheumatoid arthritis, we talk only about disease modifying agents. We cannot talk about cure of diabetes or cure of hypertension yet. We do not talk about cure of rheumatoid arthritis yet if a person has presented in the established or late stages. So once you are on, you, uh, once a physician has decided that you do need medication for rheumatoid, then the medications will be first some anti-inflammatory agents. It may be use of commonly called as painkillers or some steroids which are the fastest acting drugs. However, we do not like to use steroids for a long time. We try to minimize the use of steroids as low as possible, as low doses and as less duration as possible. That will depend on the individual patient and will be decided by the physician when they see the patient. The other drugs which we commonly use are some immunosuppressants or disease modifying agents. There is a common concern that these medications are used for treatment of cancer. The doses used are quite different and the medications which we use for management of rheumatoid arthritis are even considered just immunomodulators because of their decreased dosage rather than real immunosuppressants. The common drugs which are used are methotrexate, hydroxychloroquine, sulfasalazine, leflunamide. All of these medications have to be used under monitoring and in the recommended doses only. When these drugs are used as per recommended dosage and monitoring, they are safe and any early side effects can be caught uh, uh, by uh, picking up on the lab test immediately. And in early stages, these side effects are also re reversible on stopping or changing over the drugs. So the issue of side effects, if you are under regular monitoring and regular touch with your physician, you need not really worry that they will cause some unexplainable damage to your body. Latest medications which are further available are these newer drugs called as biologics. They have really changed the landscape of management of arthritis. There are many drugs available. Again, the risk of benefits and side effects will be evaluated on a per case basis. But overall, again, 
when used under proper guidance and monitoring these drugs are safe and have changed the life of many patients who have otherwise been treatment dependent for rheumatoid arthritis thank you dr madhuri so in the past if you go a couple of decades ago when a patient has been diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis a lot of them used to go into a severe stage where they are restricted to bed to such extent and uh, most of them used to need surgery but with the advent of all the new medications for in treating uh, rheumato uh, rheumatoid arthritis the need for surgery has gone down significantly but some patients still end up with uh, end stage uh, rheumatoid arthritis with worn out joints completely in those patients yes we do need to do some surgical treatments so um, alas dr rajesh what are the treatments available particularly for the hands and the feet when uh, patients develop uh, rheumatoid arthritis with worn out joints yeah. um so uh, dr madhuri has very well explained the medical management of uh, rheumatoid arthritis but in spite of that sometimes when the patient starts getting deformities in the joints and uh, uh, once the acute inflammatory stage is suppressed by the medication treatment so we always it's like a Uh, like a uh, combined effort you know we take the help of rheumatologist to suppress the inflammatory reaction to begin with and then once the inflammatory process uh, reduced then we think of uh, correcting the deformities or if the if if the joints are deformities uh, in the for example if the deformities in the feet are uh, restricting their movements most of the time in rheumatoids in spite of having deformities functionally they will be still be doing good so we assess the case based uh, how much of disability that is actually causing to the patient whether with these deformities are they able to do their day to day activities without pain so if there is no pain still have deformity but still they are doing well functionally so we don't tend to uh, operate on them so if they having in spite of medical management if they still having pain and the deformity is progressing affecting their day to day life then we start thinking about uh, surgery so for example if there is a gross deformity in the knees because of the arthritis and that they are not able to walk then we contemplate uh, doing a knee replacement like of uh, knee replacement sort of surgery to give them a, a, a good uh, joint and uh, uh, functionally make them better if in the feet uh, they sometimes we see cross deformities the toes are going into uh, curly toes or uh, going away from the actual uh, ankle joint then that needs to be uh, corrected and there are various procedures surgical uh, procedures which uh, we uh, do to prevent the deformity and preventing the uh, allowing them to wear proper footwear and uh, making them uh, uh, pain free and improving their function so it's all about either medical management or the surgical management it is improving the function especially in the uh, rheumatoid uh, patients so as i said even in the hand sometimes they'll have very gross deformities but if they have a good grip strength they are able to do their day to day activities then we tend to continue with the medical management if the uh, certain deformities which are affecting their day to day function only then we try to uh, do the surgeries in uh, uh, especially in in rheumatoid patients because by uh, doing surgery sometimes we can make the uh, uh, patient's function worse as well so we need to assess carefully and then uh, we with the uh, in touch with the rheumat rheumatologist uh, and then we decide whether we have to go ahead with surgery and and then we plan accordingly thanks to rajesh this is very clear uh, when it comes to when to intervene in uh, patients with uh, rheumatoid arthritis as dr rajesh said it's very important to do a proper functional assessment if the function is maintained and the medications which dr madhuri is going to give are helping the pain that patient will never need surgery even if they have significant deformities but if they need deformity correction the other aspect we can do is uh, using orthotics like appropriate footwear based on certain measurements we create uh, footwear which fits to that particular patient to correct the deformity these are called corrective orthoses so there are different ways we can treat the deformities but because there is deformity it doesn't mean that the patient needs surgery the patient needs surgery only when the function is significantly affected and when the uh, medical management is not effective and uh, there are some myths in uh, uh, treatment of rheumatoid arthritis i would ask dr madhuri about them the first one is um, 
alternative medicine is better than uh, um, allopathic medicine in treating these conditions. How far do you agree, Dr. Madhuri? So, yes, sir, it is a very common myth. I think uh, we do see a lot of patients who try allopathy and either they are unsatisfied with the response or they are worried about fear of adverse effects. One common thing I see is their local pharmacist says these medications are not safe. Please don't take them for a long mm -hmm. time. And so they uh, withdraw from allopathy and move on to other complementary or other uh, systems of medicine. Uh, while we should not deny the utility of other systems of medicine, uh, as far as we have seen, uh, definitely allopathy has an evidence-based approach to uh, managing these diseases. And uh, the role or the way the patient should be approached is uh, very, uh, it is well, it's a systematic way of approaching your patient. Uh, at first visit, depending on the duration of symptoms based on the functional class, like Dr. Rajesh has discussed, uh, what is the regular activity level? What is the compromise they are facing due to the arthritis? And uh, is there a damage component which can be, which has to be lived with or it needs a surgical correction or is it an active disease which can be managed with medicines? All these factors are assessed and uh, we also do consider, especially in females, their reproductive plans, whether they have completed their family, whether they are yet to begin their family, the risk of medication, their plans of pregnancy, uh, specific issues during breastfeeding. Uh, there is always a fear of a young mother who, what would be the effect of the disease or the drugs on my baby if she is pregnant. Uh, the, these diseases behave differently during pregnancy and after delivery. So all these issues are assessed in a systematic way. And we do all these, we do the required medications only based on what is required and under regular monitoring. I would just like to reiterate that if you are under regular touch with your physician and under regular lab tests as recommended, you need not worry about the risk of side effects. Whether other systems are better or no, I think we can only talk about our system for now. That's definitely true. But when we actually look at why a patient moves on from one system of uh, medical practice to other is because of the frustration that the condition is not getting cured. And to make it clear, once an arthritis develops to an extent where it is causing symptoms, there is no cure. Unfortunately, at this stage, at this stage, there is no cure for arthritis. And this is a, a there's a long-term treatment is required. So that's where Dr. Madhuri, as she's saying, you've got to be in touch with your treating doctor. And uh, don't expect that the condition is going to be completely cured. If somebody is saying, I'm going to cure your problem, uh, I don't think uh, that is the case at this time. So please don't switch on and switch off to different systems. If you really want to try and if the other systems are working well, you're welcome to go. But you speak to your physician first and then you can switch on to other systems. That is a better way of doing things. Absolutely. Okay. And the other myth is uh, whenever we go to a rheumatologist, we are bombarded with uh, steroids. I don't think that is the case. Steroids are used only when they are required. Yes. So can you please tell us when do you actually yes. use them? So and when I am you happy that uh, Dr. Sinas has brought up this very important and very common uh, fear, this one. So steroids are one of the most powerful medications we have. In certain conditions, they are even life-saving. So it is not that all steroids are bad, but like any drug, it has to be used in moderation and in the recommended doses only. Steroids are one of the fastest acting medications you have. When we see a patient who has a bad inflammatory arthritis, for, for say rheumatoid arthritis, with a whole lot of swollen joints and their fingers are stiff in this way due to a lot of swelling in the joints and even unable to move their fingers, you can start off with other medications, but that will take them at least three to six months to really experience a significant improvement in their symptoms and daily life. In this interim, we do start off the other medications or the disease modifying agents simultaneously, but for a quicker relief, for a quicker functionality of the patient, we start off some doses of steroids, typically a low dose steroids only. We use it for a period of say one to two months, keep the person under review, and if their swelling, stiffness, and those symptoms are gone, the rheumatologist or the treating physician will be the first person to say, let's cut down on the steroids. The problem with most patients is, unfortunately in India, there are a lot of, I mean, issues are there. So steroids are one of the cheapest and most easily available medications. 
So it is very easily to pick it up over the counter and let go of the other medications because they are they require more monitoring. They are not as fast acting. You take one dose of a methotrexate or a hydroxychloroquine, you don't see the benefit as rapidly as you see with a steroid. So you tend to pick up on the shortcut and go ahead with steroids. People become steroid dependent. You see the typical steroid facies, which is well described. A lot of puffiness of the face, facial hair growth in females, abdominal obesity, thinning of the hands and the limbs, multiple other complications of steroids like cataract, acidity, osteoporosis, diabetes, hypertension. All these are due to steroid overuse or abuse. If used in recommended doses and under guidance, steroids will be one of your fastest acting medications. We do limit the use of steroids depending on the person and the individual case basis. So it is not a strict no-no. If people do not want to have steroids, we do have other options to give them. But the fear of steroids should not stop you from approaching a rheumatologist. That's a very important uh, thing uh, which uh, people should understand. Uh, as a trained doctors, we know where to use them uh, appropriately. and We don't want to overuse them. And when we write a prescription, we always mention the duration you need to take and how to taper it down. So it is always important to be in follow-up with the uh, consultant so that uh, we can monitor how your symptoms are and how we can modify the medication rather than taking uh, self decisions. So please avoid taking over-the-counter steroid steroids uh, so that you will not end up with all the complications which has been uh, explained. So coming to other uh, common problem, osteoarthritis. Again, in osteoarthritis, um, it's a chronic condition and uh, there is no cure yet. There are very different uh, modalities of treatment which are being used in treatment of osteoarthritis. The most commonly affected joint is the knee. So we'll talk more about knee arthritis. And we are seeing this uh, more common in the younger age group nowadays. Uh, if you go to a couple of decades ago, we used to see patients above 60 years very commonly. Now, uh, it is dropped down even in 40s, late 40s, we are seeing a lot of patients with severe arthritis. Uh, the main question to answer is how can I prevent, this is a very common question people ask, uh, how can I prevent development of osteoarthritis? What do you say, Dr. Rajesh? Yeah. So, um, we have discussed about rheumatoid arthritis. Um, uh, unlike rheumatoid arthritis, I would say, uh, osteoarthritis is, is, is more forgiving yeah. uh, because it is affects only one or two joints and uh, it is relatively less aggressive and uh, with uh, proper management uh, we can really prevent further uh, uh, further derailment of the osteoarthritis so the main modalities as we are seeing in our day-to-day -day practice we can see most of them are developing arthritis in early age group so well, apart from the uh, medical management or the surgical management, there are many uh, things we can do to prevent uh, the progression of arthritis or to prevent the arthritis from the beginning itself. Uh, most important is the lifestyle modifications to begin with. You know? So if we keep our uh, muscles toned around the joints you know, with gentle exercises and keeping the muscles around the joints uh, stronger, so healthy lifestyle, doing regular exercise uh, will cause, uh, will prevent the progression of arthritis or prevent the on onset of arthritis basically because once the muscles around the joints are stronger then the forces going through the joint are much less and the uh, degeneration of this cartilage uh, which is inside our joint is much less so we can prevent the progression of arthritis. So these days this sedentary lifestyle is one of the uh, major cause of developing arthritis at an early age group um, so uh, first and foremost is lifestyle modifications and uh, the second thing is uh, trying to reduce the weight. Um, so we see a lot of obesity these days. So which is obviously putting a lot of brunt on these uh, weight bearing joints, the knee joints, especially next followed by the hip joint and, uh, and the uh, foot and ankle, etc. So these weight bearing joints are taking a lot of brunt because of overweight. So the other thing, second thing is to uh, reduce the weight by various means. I mean, by mainly by uh, diet modifications and um, regular exercise that's the second way of managing it and then um, the healthy lifestyle is one thing and uh, uh, second secondly all there is another 
thing you know whenever you you feel pain in the joint you are always thinking oh does any do i need surgery so surgery is the last thing which we think about in the in in, in managing with osteoarthritis even the severe osteoarthritis the surgical part is the very last thing which we think about so next comes the medical management we can further discuss the uh, medical management so lifestyle modifications reducing weight and uh, uh, these are the main things to start off with uh, especially for the osteoarthritis because it's more predictable osteoarthritis unlike uh, rheumatoid arthritis correct so when it comes to osteoarthritis uh, a lot of patients ask why is that i'm uh, getting arthritis early See, uh, as Dr. Rajesh said, there is the conditions or I mean, the various modalities you can use are modifying factors. There are non-modifying fa fa factors which uh, we will not be able to do anything about it. Among the non-modifying factors in osteoarthritis, age. We can't reverse the age. Number two is the genes. Genetically, yes, there are uh, multifactorial, uh, multiple genes involved in osteoarthritis. Uh, um, and also the third one is the sex. Unfortunately, women are more affected in osteoarthritis than men. So once they reach 70 years of age, it is almost same in both the uh, men and women. But in younger age groups, women are more affected. So these are the non-modifying factors, age, sex and genes. Modifying factors, as Dr. Rajesh said, very important is the weight. Always maintain a good weight, and uh, that should be a motive for everyone who is in who's in uh, early twenties. From then on, you got to make a, a sure shot decision to ensure that you're not gaining weight. And uh, when we look at the BMI, we say 20 to 25 is the normal BMI body mass index, which is based on your height and weight. So if you can maintain that within 20 to 25, the load going through your joint would be an optimal load. It is not going to cause any damage or mechanical wear in the joint. In India, our body mass index should be, I would say it's more of 18 to 23 is normal because our overall physical structure is different from the Westerners. So the 20 to 25 is more for Westerners. For us, it is 18 to 23. I would try to keep my weight or body mass index under 23. That makes a huge difference. And the second thing is, uh, um, after the weight, the muscle strengthening. As Dr. Raja said, the weight helps is by reducing the load going into the joint. And the third and very other important factor, which uh, nowadays we forget about is the flexibility. As you are aging, your flexibility goes down. Because we are getting used to more westernized kind of uh, lifestyle, we are not sitting on the floor, which is used to be a very good culturally uh, thing for our Indian community. But now we are more chair bound. So we are not using the full extent of the joint. When you're not using the full extent of the joint, the muzzle is not getting completely stretched out. Then you're going into tightness, muzzle tightness. That results in stiffness. That causes point loading. That is, the load goes more on only one particular area. And that causes wear out. Instead of using the entire joint, you're just using only a part of the joint. So that causes the early uh, breakdown in the cartilage lining. That results in later stage of arthritis. So please ensure that you are maintaining your flexibility. And uh, one of the greatest thing our Indian culture has given is yoga. That's why it is very famous. What does yoga do? It will ensure that your joints are very flexible, your muscles are flexible. So that's a very important thing which you can inculcate in your daily habit, which can prevent arthritis or which can delay the development of arthritis. When it comes to medical management, yes, there are a lot of medications used, but most of them are painkillers. There are different types of painkillers, again, and along with that, there are a lot of um, medications in the market which are given to prevent arthritis. Dr. Madhuri, what do you think about all these uh, medications and nutraceuticals? Like sir, I said, yes, sir, there are a lot of them available in the market. Uh, at best, the evidence supporting them is weak. So we cannot uh, disregard their role totally. But uh, for a patient with established or uh, functional limitation due to the knee osteoarthritis, I think uh, the role of these nutraceuticals or these supplements would be uh, less in uh, managing the disease or managing the problem. Uh, it is, like Sarah said, it is better to focus more on exercise and lifestyle measures, weight management, physiotherapy, and if needed, a surgical procedure for optimum management. 
perhaps in the early stages use of these medications do seem to give some symptomatic relief but even then they have to be supplemented by these lifestyle measures and exercises which have been discussed uh, relying only on those nutraceuticals to prevent or uh, uh, reverse osteoarthritis is not right yeah so clearly there is uh, unfortunately there is no evidence to prove that either of these uh, uh, nutraceuticals have a role in uh, reversing the arthritis so there is no role for uh, these medications for reversing the arthritis there are a lot of collagen supplements etc etc uh, one common thing um, uh, people say is uh, they don't cause any issues why can't i take it but uh, i think that is a fallacy we should not go into that mode of thing for me i have uh, never written any of this and unless there's a clear cut evidence to say that they make a difference so far there is no evidence and the next um, medical management is the painkillers like uh, anti inflammatory medications nsaids they have their own problems particularly if you are using in the long term so better to avoid the nsaids for the long term and uh, please reach to the orthopedic surgeons and uh, take advice in how we can optimize your symptoms if the arthritis goes to a severe stage then there are other modalities like there are different types of injections available intraarticular injections particularly the steroids intraarticular steroid or chondroitin sulfate or uh, hyaluronic acid injections and uh, recently there is a big usage of platelet rich plasma or the pre prp and uh, stem cell use so i'll ask dr rajesh what is your uh, opinion on usage of these intraarticular injections yeah um, once again like any other medication uh, the intraarticular injections are getting more and more popularity but uh, we need to be again a bit cautious in using these uh, uh, intraarticular injections as well especially uh, steroid injections you know they are fast acting they might immediately cause little relief because they calm the inflammation down in the knee joint but again there is a risk that it can also cause uh, aggravate or rather uh, fasten the damage of the cartilage as well so uh, steroid injections i uh, uh, never give uh, especially if the patient is being planned for surgery the risk of infection increases the risk of uh, uh, degeneration of the cartilage also increases and uh, the fat around the joint also can get uh, um, uh, degenerate if we give these uh, steroid injections so very very cautious about uh, steroid injections um, unless and until the patient is not fit for surgery is in severe pain and want some sort of immediate relief yes we can probably uh, give uh, but again repeated injections of steroid is no no now coming to other injections um now as dr sinus uh, was mentioning about um glucosamine injections chondroitin sulfate injections again the these sort of injections they are like um uh, they are, they don't have uh, enough evidence as of uh, now we can argue and there are some papers supporting in early stages of arthritis uh, like say we sort of grade the arthritis from 0 1 2 3 4 where zero is normal and grade 4 is where the cartilage is completely gone and the bone is rubbing on bone um, in the initial stages like say zero maybe in one or two or maybe up to a three uh, sometimes these injections might help but again there is no clear cut uh, evidence uh, in some literature they say in the initial stages it might help to an extent but again this is like this is something like oiling the joint say for example if some joint is getting rusted and we put some oil and it uh, uh, becomes smooth for for some time so these injections also to an extent uh, help like that but complete regeneration of the cartilage uh, there is no clear cut uh, evidence yet so we give these injections maybe uh, to help uh, to lubricate the joint to an extent maybe it might help for a few months uh, and then again during that time again physical therapy physiotherapy exercises are a must just giving injection itself is uh, not enough so we need to continue with that and now uh, everybody is hearing about this prp injections uh, everywhere um, so prp injections again very minimal role in the early stages of arthritis in uh, grade 2 and 1 and 3 but uh, again uh, we could argue uh, in these early stages uh, probably even without those injections by doing uh, regular physical therapy might help uh, equally uh, uh, effective as giving uh, any other prp injections so we need to be very cautious so uh, see your uh, uh, you know senior doctors orthopedic surgeons who uh, who are aware of these and who can really educate the patient as to whether whether he is in a stage to give those injections or not 
um, and take it accordingly. So you need to be really cautious in taking these uh, injections. In um, patients who are really unfit for surgery, lot of comorbidities and uh, not able to uh, uh, go ahead with the surgery, in those patients there are some injections are uh, given to numb the nerves around the joint. Um, you know what we call sometimes it's also called RF ablation therapy where we give some injections around the joint to numb the nerves but again these are uh, temporary uh, yes it can give some relief uh, in the initial stages which will help the patient uh, uh, to mobilize a little bit but again um, need to be these are limited to a certain group of patients it's not like a one size fits all so we need to be uh, in a case based and depending on the patient age factors and the comorbidities we need to decide on these uh, uh, injections that's a very uh, clear synopsis of uh, how the injections work in the joint so when it comes to the intraortical injections for me the patient who needs a steroid is somebody who has a, a wet joint or where there is a fusion in the joint because of the inflammation even in osteoarthritis there will be a lot of inflammation you can develop a lot of fluid in the joint to reduce that inflammation when the patient is in significant pain is restricting their activity and uh, other may pain management is not working i would consider a steroid injection in that patient but not somebody who is uh, in stage 4 who will get a benefit from a, a surgery like a knee replacement so i don't see any role for a steroid injection in that particular patient group and when it comes to uh, hyaluronic acid or synvix or visco supplementation the so called in wet joints we tend to use that is the uh, one of the uh, argument which is put forward but when we look at the evidence very clearly uh, there is not much of a benefit it is uh, it works more as a placebo so uh, for me there is no role for any hyaluronic acid when it comes to platelet rich plasma there is a lot of usage and uh, as Dr. Rajesh said, you got to be very careful uh, how you choose the treatment. So I would depend on my uh, consultant and their experience and uh, what they tell and how, uh, what benefit you are going to get out of it. You got to consider all these factors. The other important thing is the stem cells in the use of uh, treatment of knee osteoarthritis. Uh, knee osteoarthritis is not a, a single problem. It is not because of uh, one common issue which can be taught. Uh, it is multifactorial. There are many factors. And uh, expecting a stem cell injection going into the joint, clearing all the multifactorial is still not been established. So uh, for me, still there is no role for stem cell therapy in an established stage 3 or 4 osteoarthritis of the knee but if a patient has a cartilage defect a localized defect where there is because of any osteochondritis desiccans a condition where the cartilage comes off the bone or it is because of post-traumatic a localized lesion when we prepare the lesion well and uh, make some uh, holes into the bone and apply the uh, uh, stem cells along with the fibrin glue they do regenerate cartilage so this is only for some specific patient group where there is a localized lesion and it is not for a generalized osteoarthritis. So that's a clear cut distinction. At this stage, that's where we are. So there's no cure for osteoarthritis. It's mainly how you control your symptoms, the pain management, the injections, the the pain clinics are a lot of pain clinics are doing this uh, radio frequency ablation and they say non-surgical modality where without knife I'm going to cure I would uh, disagree with that there is no cure for arthritis it is only temporarily re improving the symptoms or getting some kind of optimization of pain control that's where these modalities help but for somebody who has stage 4 arthritis where the entire lining of the joint, the cartilage is completely worn out and when there is bone rubbing on bone, the best treatment to date is going for a joint replacement surgery. And uh, I don't want to go into details of the joint replacement surgery but this gives a, a, a focus on how we treat osteoarthritis in general. And uh, I would ask Dr. Madhuri if she could add anything more onto this. No sir, I perfectly agree with uh, all that we have discussed so far. So still the focus should be on lifestyle modification, weight management and regular flexibility exercises and muscle strengthening exercises too. 
core that is your abdomen your spine and the thigh muscles or the quadriceps these are the exercises which should be strengthened focused for patients who have knee pain to help in strengthening the muscles and offloading the joint this offloading is also with weight loss even a minimum weight loss will lead to a significant improvement in symptoms so uh, relying too much on medication or this injection or prp or stem cell possibly you will get more long lasting effects and more sustained effects if you are able to inculcate these lifestyle measures and uh, if it is a knee replacement it is a knee replacement if someone has said it needs a knee replacement it needs a knee replacement do not be too worried about the success rates and the infection rates i think dr sino should just add a comment on those common myths again of knee replacements yeah there's a whole gamut of uh, <laughs> uh, things you can talk about a knee replacement uh, but see knee replacement is a very successful surgery and uh, there's a very uh, much established uh, uh, evidence that it Im- effect, uh, it improves your uh, lifestyle life expectancy significantly so uh, dr rajesh do you have anything to add on to the surgical treatment of osteoarthritis yeah see um, we have i mean covered all the uh, non operative management so there are very definite indications uh, where a person needs a knee replacement where say for example a patient comes with a, a, a grade 4 arthritis where there is a, no cartilage left and the bone is rubbing on bone in severe pain and a cross deformity so obviously in those patients whatever we do to them they are not going to uh, medical managers are not going to help because when they are walking with the knees turned inwards or outwards and there's a significant deformity uh, you can easily even a layman can say a, a medical management will not be successful in these type of patients so there is a definite indication where it has to undergo surgery is a number one the pain is not subsiding with all our non operative management and there is a significant deformity affecting their uh, walk uh, in, and their tripping so that's obvious uh, there is there is no brainer where uh, that needs a surgery and somebody says that with the injection i can treat this uh, that is not going to happen so that is a definitive indication uh, but again though surgery is the final stay for these osteoarthritis and we can get them pain free and we can uh, improve their uh, function but again in even in those stages the physical therapy or the physiotherapy and improving the muscle improving the strength of the muscle is a must whether we undergo surgery or not we we always have to put them on some sort of uh, uh, gentle exercises uh, depending on the pain um, depending on the pain threshold the exercise must be going hand in hand either with the medical management or surgical management because in spite of doing the surgery if the muscle is not Uh, functioning at all uh, even after surgery they might not do well so that is a uh, one important thing which needs to be uh, told to the patients and even in, uh, all the, uh, everybody needs to understand that that either it's a medical management or operative management uh, hand in hand the other uh, things the lifestyle manage lifestyle modifications exercise and losing weight uh, has to be there along with these uh, along with the surgery Yes, as Dr. Sinha Sathi said, so if we go into the surgical management, a lot of things we can uh, um, discuss. But you know, for uh, for brief for for a general understanding of the osteoarthritis, if we know that um, there is medical management exists and surgical management exists, and when to um, use these uh, effectively, uh, should be guided by a, a, a senior orthopedic surgeon. Thanks, Dr. Rajesh. So on this uh, World Arthritis Day. i wish everybody uh, uh, safe joints and uh, keep healthy joints by part by taking precautions on how you can prevent development of the arthritis so as we said the most important thing is lifestyle lifestyle is the key maintain your weight please do activities regularly you don't have to limit your activities even if you develop a bit of arthritis better to do activities rather than not doing activities and at uh, aaj hospitals we have fantastic team of doctors we have a big orthopedic department and are supported by rheumatology and also a, a good physiotherapy department so please take care and thank you for joining us thank you not bad eh? mm. done done we kept up it went on well